Day one, just switched on my computer. I'm going to create a project using code. A couple of weeks ago, I was frustrated with coding. Despite listening to podcasts about developers building amazing web apps, I had little to show for it. I was stuck in the trap of preparing to code without actually starting. The only way out was to take action. With a list of crazy ideas, I decided to build a project. One week or five afternoons, and I'd deploy whatever code I'd written, no matter what. This is the story of that journey and the lessons I learned along the way. So this is a list of ideas that I've come up with over the last few months. The one that is most exciting to me at the moment is website to list daily YouTube uploaders. It would be interesting to have a website that lists how many days that they've been uploading to YouTube. You can't get that information from YouTube directly. I'm thinking to add a leaderboard of the top YouTubers, which could be an interesting way to add a competitive element to this. So in terms of a name, I've got some ideas already, but I'm going to brainstorm them and then we'll pick the best one. I did like Vlogstreak, but that name could be misunderstood. And I want something snappy, ideally just two syllables. And all of these ones here are more than two syllables, as is this. The only option left is Vlogrank. I think it's a pretty good choice. With this quick plan out the way, it was time to prove I'm the kind of developer who takes action. I wasn't building anything groundbreaking, so I stuck with familiar technologies from previous projects. Now I'm going to go against all my natural instincts and start writing some code. I want to get familiar with the YouTube API calls that are going to help me get the videos for specific channels so that I can determine how many daily uploads each channel has done. I can use this playlist items API. I'm getting back all the recent YouTube videos for my own channel and I'm getting 25 results. Next step is to write some JavaScript code to do the same thing, but automatically npm init. Okay, I've got an npm project, good start. Next step, to create a JavaScript file. I should be able to add an entry to this list of scripts and then run it with npm run basic. Yes, can't believe that worked. Yeah, so I've written some code to translate a YouTube handle into a channel ID. Next step is get the list of videos from that channel ID. If I can do that by the end of the day, I'll be really happy. And now when we run this, we get daily vlogs. That is a good start. This quick win was exactly what I needed. JavaScript wasn't my strong point, but getting this solution running in just a few hours made me think, what else could I achieve? So I've only been working on this for maybe two or three hours and I feel like I've had a bit of a win. So I'm going to leave it at that and come back to it tomorrow with some motivation. See you tomorrow. I think starting a new project is like rolling a heavy ball. Once you get it going, you've got some momentum. Today, I would love to implement an algorithm that can transform that list of dates into a single number. Years writing software in a professional setting that prioritizes reliability left me feeling out of my depth in a fast-paced project like this. But one tool from my previous experience that did prove vital was unit testing. This is kryptonite to many indie hackers, but unit testing was exactly what I needed to guide the behavior of this new function. I wanted to be able to pass it a load of different lists of dates like this. So I'm gonna use a testing library called Jest, and I'm just going to follow this getting started guide. I've just spent an hour trying to get this Jest mocking working. Been a bit of a nightmare, but now in the test I can basically mock the response from YouTube, and in this case I'm returning a single uploaded video, and I expect the response to be one. And I'm just going to keep adding more scenarios until I'm satisfied. I saved a lot of time by using mocks instead of the real YouTube API, and I was starting to enter that inevitable flow state where problems arise and you repeatedly solve them. It's the addictive nature of software development that keeps developers motivated. Okay, now I've got a load of test cases. I think I'm going to call it a day, and tomorrow I've got a few more tweaks to make to this algorithm. Tiny progress every day makes Tom a happy boy. I've only got three more days to go. So hopefully tomorrow I'm going to get this algorithm done and move on to deploying this code to the back end and figuring out how to store all this data in a database. 
Today I'm looking forward to finishing the algorithm that counts how many videos vloggers have uploaded in a row. Just having a look through the YouTube API here for the cool that lists videos in a playlist and it's got max results. Default is five, but I can actually set this to 50. So I need to paginate in sets of 50. As I reached the midway part of the challenge, I could feel my JavaScript skills improving. I discovered a feature called Generator Functions, which let you return multiple values from a single function. When you put a star or an asterisk after a function name, you can basically return items in the middle of your function using this yield keyword. So now when I run this function over my friend on YouTube. It's paginating through all the different dates and it's worked out that there are 396 uploads. But time was running out and all I had to show was some backend JavaScript code. With so much left to do to turn this web app into a usable online tool, I pushed myself to get the database up and running. The details that I'm thinking to store in the database, channel ID, channel handle, channel name, and upload count. So I've created definition for a DynamoDB table, DynamoDB being database technology in AWS. And I can deploy this using serverless framework, just using a single command SLS deploy. I finished that with just 15 minutes to spare before my 5 p.m. cutoff. So I set myself a mini challenge. Database is working, but what I really want to do is create an API that does the call to YouTube and insert that data into the database. I've just written this function that gets the channel info, gets the upload count, then it creates this item for the database, then it inserts it into the database and returns a 200 response. So this is going to be running in AWS Lambda and it's going to be hooked up to an API. So I'm going to deploy this now just waiting for this to run. So in theory, we should be able to do a post request to this endpoint slash my channel name. Never works first time. <laughs> Here we go again. Yes. Let's try this for a channel that has daily uploads. Yes. And if we look in the database here, we have all the data. I am pretty surprised that I managed to get that done. And it's tough because I have to keep reminding myself that things that I'm getting stuck on, like unit tests that are failing, I kind of have to ignore in preference to getting something actually working. Some say that time constraints stifle creativity, but when used at the right time, they can light a fire under your ass to get shit done. Despite the work still ahead, I finished the day feeling pleasantly surprised by my small achievement. Tomorrow, I've got to finish off the APIs and it'd be great to get on to starting the front end because I've only got two days left, so I've definitely got my work cut out. I've only got an hour and a half today and I definitely want to get on to the UI by the end of the day. Let's get to work. So this is where I'm storing my APIs. I've got one post API and I want to create a new one and it's going to be something like get channels and it's basically going to return all the records from the database sorted by most daily uploads first. Okay, I have built this second API now, so let's give this bad boy a go. Nice. I wanted to wrap up the backend code and move on, but I hit a database problem that jeopardized the entire project. To succeed, I had to push aside my instinct to always do things the right way and focus on getting it done. Because I'm using a technique with this table that's a bit of a no-no, scan, which basically means it has to read every item in the table to be able to sort the elements. Considering that nobody apart from me might not ever use this site, then I think it's fine to go with this for now. After overcoming my perfectionist tendencies, I set out to salvage the rest of the day by building the most basic UI possible. And I'm gonna use view and just follow the getting started guide here. So yay, we've got the view demo working. Now it's a case of changing this to call the API and listing our channels. Running out of time, but we've got an app that's listing YouTube channels by number of daily uploads. I am genuinely surprised 
that I got that done because I ran into so many problems. Well, basically, I've ignored those problems and just proceeded anyway with the hacky solution. So tomorrow, it should be fun because I get to style this application and make it look cool and actually deploy it into production. Stop getting lost in the code. Do whatever it takes to get that out the door. It is day five and I'm excited to get this thing done. This is Daisy UI, the styling add-on to Tailwind CSS. It's gonna make it easy for me to use colors that work well together. So I'm gonna add this into the project. Oh, our app has been magically styled. The tools I chose for this project made it easy, even for developers like me without special design skills, to build a UI. Leaning on these tools was the only way I could bring the idea in my head to life within the limited time remaining. These are all the themes that I can go for. How about cyberpunk? We've got a bit of a leaderboard situation going on here. It's looking very bright. I'm gonna keep tweaking this. Okay, so this code has got our little form going at the bottom here. I've added some error handling, so if you put in a fake channel name, you get an error. I had finally built the web app I imagined. The problem was it was still running on my local machine, not in the cloud where users could actually access it. With so many backend tasks left, I knew I had to knock them out quickly to avoid pulling an all-nighter. So we can deploy all the resources that is going to make this website public into our development environment. dev.vlogrank.co Yes! Can't believe it works. First time. It was getting late, and I was still only halfway to production. Conference call time. I've got a list of a few things that I want to do, and I'm going to give myself 45 minutes to get this done, and then whatever state this app is in, I'm going to deploy it to production. 45 minutes start right now. First of all, I need to make this thing responsive. This is looking okay on mobile now. Oh no, we've run out of time! When I run this command, it will deploy my website to production and it will be live for the world to see. Three, two, one. Uh, Blogrank.com Are you there? Vlogrank.co Are you there? It works! I'm just amazed that my site is live. It's a thing, it kind of works, and it's available at vlogrank.co. To some, what I built might not seem like much, but creating this in under 15 hours total felt like a miracle to me. No matter your current skill set, you'd be surprised how far it can take you towards delivering a project. With a bit of focus, you too can write software that brings ideas to life. I'm exhausted, nothing else to say, except I'm gonna go and watch some YouTube. <laughs>